you also <laughs> knew LeBron at a very young age. I mean, LeBron was what, like 15, 16 when you met him? I, know, I met LeBron when he was 17. I pitched LeBron. I, the, 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 the whole story about LeBron and the $10 million check that he turned down, yes. I was there. I'm, it was my idea to give him the check. I was in the room give, to give him the check. A kid with a single mom. I couldn't believe it. Living in an apartment. Yeah. And you got a $10 million check. So That's here you right. go, bro. Paul Feynman. So I tell Paul Feynman, I'm like, we leave. We're in New York for meetings. We're flying up to uh, Massachusetts to meet LeBron. He's flying he, the plane from Akron. Yeah, from Akron. It's like a 6 o'clock, 5.30 meeting. He, he had to finish school to come to okay. me. Boom. I'm like, Paul. He goes, Adidas is going to do the deal. Nike's going to do the deal. He wants to go to Nike. His agent has already pre-approved the deal with Nike. I'm like, let me tell you how you deal with this. In the record business, when you want to sign somebody, you give them the money right there in the front. Like, you know what? Whatever you think the number is, we'll give you this signing bonus right now to not even take the other meetings. Because I figure if you're meeting me, you're really considering it. Right. I'm going to give you a signing bonus to make, on top of what you think you should get, so that there's no reason for you to take the other meetings. $10 million is the number. He calls his wife. This is when I seen some early, some balling shit. He calls his wife. When we land on the FBO, there's a $10 million personal check waiting at the thing because we're going right to the office. I'm leading the pitch to LeBron and and, and Maverick and uh, his agent at the time. I can't remember this guy's name. Gordon, I'm sorry, Aaron Gordon. Doing the pitch, doing the whole thing, and we get to the thing, to the final stage, and Paul's going to present him the check. Paul presents him the check. I remember staring at his face. This is huge. We're going to sign LeBron James. We leave the room. We come back. When he leaves the check and says he's going to take the other meetings, I clap. I knew the world changed. A young black man, eight, 18 years old, walked away from $10 million going back to the projects. I clapped. I clapped and it was my idea that didn't work. It meant so much. Not that the Reebok was wrong or the check was wrong, but the, the freedom and confidence and belief in yourself to do that. This is a new generation of individuals. This is a new generation of thought that's coming from African Americans. That's what I thought about. And I was so proud of us at that moment. Wow. And you pretty much been in his life because you did the beats by Dre commercial with him. You and did it with, with, man, drunk, man, with man, Ronnie. Like this, man, man, LeBron, man, LeBron and I like this, man. Me, LeBron, Maverick, Rich, they, I could tell you everything. I mean, Ramos, this is, these are my brothers. Right. These are my brothers. Maverick worked with me, you know, since he was six months before that. Maverick was with me, you know, staying at my crib, working out of my office, you know, me mentoring him, giving him, you know, the tips, showing him the business, whatever. Like, those are my brothers. Right. It's like that. I've been in every iteration of that camp from the before the, the decision to this, the, every single thing. Love those guys. Love LeBron. And, and how you feel about him is, you know, I'll just tell you right now, forget the arguing of the who's the best basketball player of all time. There's not even a question. He's the best athlete of any sport of all time. But forget whether he's the best basketball player or not. He's the best professional athlete in any sport I've ever heard of, seen of. Nobody's even close. You did Allen Iverson's first commercial. It wasn't his first commercial. It was the only one he showed up to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chuck, I love you, Chuck. The bad day is say practice. Not a game, but practice. So the likelihood you get him showing for a commercial was gonna be tough. He showed up to the commercial, um, and it was a very special thing that will you know, the commercial with him and Jada Kiss, man, it played on radio like a song. The it, it became a song. It was Alan Iverson bouncing a ball, creating a beat that Jada Kiss rapped to. Right. Um, and when I did that, Hype Williams, who's a great uh, music director, uh, at the time he shot a lot of music videos. He dominated shooting music videos, shot that. No one thought he could shoot commercials at the time. Why? <laughs> I, I have, still have no idea why that was even a thought. And we shot that commercial and it was 
you know, part of the, the package of talking about rebranding. We had mm-hmm. to Reebok was Skips. Let me be very clear. You, you know what Skips are? And people, I don't wear those. Are, those are Skips. Yeah. yeah. yeah you don't want to wear those. You're right. Right. You skip those and find something else. You skip something and find something else. <laughs> those are Reeboks. We had to rebrand that. Part of it was um, this R, changing the letters to RBK. Okay. Um, Jay-Z, obviously, and, and 50 Cent and all of that stuff. And then it was AI and Jada Kiss. So we we did work around AI and Jada Kiss. We did another spot with um, uh, Stevie Francis and Scarface at the right. time. Yeah. Uh, ver, ver, that wasn't as successful. But we were doing this thing to fuse music and sport together. Because my whole thing was like every rapper wanted to be a basketball player and basketball player wanted to be a rapper. Mm-hmm. And um, that was that's less true than it was back then, uh, today. But because of that, I wanted to create marketing and advertising around that fusion. And that was the way we rebranded Reebok. Right. How were you able to convince Jay-Z uh, to create a sneaker with uh, with Reebok? It wasn't really hard to convince him. Nike at the time didn't believe in music as performed. Nike was very um, disciplined to its manifesto about athletes and performance. They wouldn't mess around with anybody else. So an artist, the most you can get from Nike was some free sneakers. Right. They wouldn't do business with you. There was no commercial opportunity. And Jay-Z knew, like the great ones do, that he was moving the culture. Okay? So when he told everybody we're wearing button-up shirts, we're going to change clothes, that was happening. If he did a pair of sneakers with Reebok, forget Reebok's uh whatever they were if he puts his name next to it they're gonna buy his sneakers right and he didn't have any self-doubt that forget nike i could do this with them and by the way while he was wearing his sneakers and selling his sneakers sometimes he'd wear nike too and he's like people ain't gonna believe me if all i did was wear my sneakers i gotta show them that i choose to wear my sneakers like I choose to wear those. Oh, it's an okay. option. But like this whole idea, like only wear your sneakers. He knew that would that that looks fake because that wouldn't be real. Right. What's real is I do like these. I also do like those. But it's creating an option, right? Which put that put Reebok in the conversation. Um. So it didn't really take much convincing. The convincing was, you know, getting a deal done. Not right. if Reebok was the right. And he company. wasn't an ambassador. He was a partner. No, Jay Z's not the ambassador of anything except himself. <laughs> he was a partner. He was a 50 50 partner. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.